terms, in Syrian Arab terms, it's about people demanding dignity and saying this country is not the personal property of the president. That's what they said in Egypt, that's what they said in Tunisia, it's what they're saying in Syria. But I think a lot of the Arab support for the armed uprising is not, has got nothing to do with Syria. It is about trying to harm Iran. It is sticking a dagger into Iran's soul for the Arabs to encourage the overthrow of Assad because Assad is the greatest, the only Arab ally of Iran. So this is about Iran. That's what I think. I want to come back to that. You're mm -hmm. painting a, a, a picture here of pure opportunism on the part of the Arabs, you know, would I ever do such a thing, Tony? <laughs> yes, there's a good deal of that involved. Uh, why now get rid of Assad at a very moment uh, when Iran is being focused on and targeted more and more in all the language coming out of Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Washington, and so on and so forth? Um, it's remarkable, isn't it, that we have an American president still actually threatening a war against Iran because it might or might not have nuclear capability, but Iran isn't actually killing anyone, whereas the Syrian regime is killing people, but it's not going to be attacked by Obama. There's an awful lot of hypocrisy going on. We've, we've even had Obama say recently, oh, it's ridiculous to hold an election in Syria with a war going on. But he was quite happy to have an election in Afghanistan when there was a much greater war going on. And then after it was declared fraudulent by the State Department, Obama actually rang Karzai and congratulated him on his election victory in the fraudulent election. A lot of hypocrisy floating around in my view. But you can't have Iran. Uh, uh, become a nuclear power with an unstable regime. Like Pakistan, you mean, but they've actually got a bomb, so we're not threatening Pakistan, are we? Look, I think the, at the end of the day, one of the lessons you learn from the Middle East is if you have a nuclear weapon, you won't get invaded. And if I was an Iranian, I'd probably like to have just one nuclear bomb just to stop anyone invading me. But do you really, really think, does anyone really believe that, that Iran is going to fire a missile at Israel and kill all the Israelis and all the Palestinians and half the Lebanese? I don't believe it for a moment. So bring me back to the aspirations uh, of the, the young people in Syria. Uh, it, it, do they understand how to get what it is they want? And do they understand the extent to which, if I'm to follow your line, they may be being manipulated by the international community, if I'm following your line? Do they, do they understand this? I think that they're very suspicious, even yes. as their own That's clear, yes. exile groups in Istanbul, for yes. example, and Takya in, Li in Libya and so on. Um, I think they're rightly suspicious of that. But you know, one of the things that has happened, in, it happened in Egypt and Tunisia, it's happened in Syria, is that people have become, young people, much better educated. I'm not putting down an advertisement for the University of Damascus, but it has improved a lot. And the growth of education, the growth of travel around the world, as well as the telecommunications, the, the internet and so on, has given people a greater understanding that they must own their own country. Mm. It mustn't be in the hands of individual families. So it is a genuine uprising, but I think it is being used. Remember how NATO was very happy to use the uprising in Libya to get all those oil concessions. Syria not having as much oil doesn't have as much interest for NATO, does it? I'm sorry to be so cynical, but I think one becomes this I, way I, after. I love your point of view. It's a point of view we don't hear enough, and it's a, a point of view that needs to be on, on the record so that well, we can talk one about the, it. One of the problems at the moment I find is that there's this kind of circuit um, that starts somewhere in Washington and comes out with all the, the experts from you know, various uh, think tanks or tink tanks as I call them, um, where they say, oh, you know, Humps is the new Benghazi. Yes. Well, it wasn't Benghazi and it was proved not to be. And the next one, oh, you know, Assad is about to be toppled. I don't think so. I was saying a year ago, this is going to take a long, long time. And I still wouldn't be surprised if some form of Assad regime wasn't in place in a year from now. That doesn't mean it'll be the same one. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be changes. But I don't think that the Ba'athist regime in Syria is going to collapse like the proverbial pack of cards. It's a much tougher thing. Doesn't mean it's nice, but it's tougher. I